I think there are, and we can debate how it's measured and, and what this does, but there are some A schools and, and there are some B schools, and we ought to be trying to learn from those A schools and trying to replicate those A schools. Those Ds and Fs, um, they may need our support, um, and we ought to be, we ought to be, we ought to be using this this information to lift up those schools and to make the kind of um, investments that James is talking about. Um, but to say that everything is okay and everything is fine and everybody's the same, that's just not that's disingenuous. Um, and so we can argue about how that measure came to be, um, but I get. Um, I, I, I am not going to. I just don't buy that we shouldn't be measuring anything, and that everybody, everything's, everything's the same because it, it just isn't. Um, as I mentioned, there are kids that are not getting the education that they deserve in our state, and um, we need to know who those kids are so that we can address those issues. I, I think the current way in which it's being measured is a first step. It's a first out of the gate, um, and what I would say is. Um, Two places that I'd point to is, is Florida uh, and New York City. Um, you know, under Joel Klein's leadership in New York City, there was there was a report card system in which they had um, three. They actually had four, but I think they should have three. <laughs> three separate gr grades. Uh, one is um, one is proficiency. One is growth. And then they also had a grade on narrowing achievement gaps. What, what James and I have spent a lot of time talking about, and that you actually got bonus points for that. So um, where, where we send our daughters uh, in, in Durham um, is, I, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, it's a low, I'm not going to get into revealing any grades that I know about, but um, I, I'm pretty sure that if you were to look at the uh, proficiency, it's going to be rather low. And if you look at the growth, it's going to be rather high. And as a parent, I can, I, you know, I, I think we, our parents are smart. They can look at those three metrics and then see an average grade and say, oh, okay, so I'm, we're, we, got, we got work to do on proficiency because all our kids aren't, are not, you know, 80% of our kids aren't reading or 50% of our kids aren't reading, so I ought to know that. But yet we've made this tremendous growth. We've, you know, we've had this growth metric. We've ex exceeded our growth expectation. And we've really narrowed some achievement gaps and our overall grade is, is an average of that. I mean, that, that to me strikes me as a pretty good metric on how you would want to do it. And, and Florida has kind of learned these lessons over the years, and, and I think. But in terms of a benchmark, it being 80-20, um, you know, I've looked at the data here, and without revealing too much before it comes out tomorrow, um, it, it's not, um, the sky isn't falling on this. I, I don't think, you know, it's perfect by any means, and I don't think you're going to get a perfect metric. But I think at least we'll be looking at, da at data and discussing this. And, and I think what, what, I would, what I'm hopeful we can do is, is use this as an opportunity to uh, lift up the excellence that we see and to address the challenges um, with, with clear eyes and a full heart in terms of how we're going we're gonna to meet these, these challenges, these schools that are challenged and uh, that need our support.